Hey cruisers, it's cruise day. We are embarking today on Carnival Panorama out of Long Beach, California. This is our first cruise out of our home state in nearly two years. Well, we all know what happened and why things have been delayed and we're ready. This is so exciting to be driving to port and not flying. It's just so much less stress. Speaking of stress, we did have a little snafu yesterday slash today that I have to tell you about. This is this is wild, but um, if you're cruising right now, basically anywhere in the United States, you have to get a COVID test two days before your cruise. It used to be three days, so you had a lot more time, right? But now it's just two days. So we took our COVID tests on Thursday. Today is Saturday, we're embarking today, so we thought no problem. Usually the lab that we use, those test results come back within 24 hours. Well, guess what folks? We still do not have COVID test results, which means with no test results, you do not get on that ship. Our son has his because he took a test a day earlier because of his age and the type of test he had to take. Long story short, yesterday we sprung into action and found an emergency place to get a backup antigen test that came back in 20 minutes. Look. I just want to tell you guys the moral of the story here because we are in fact cruise tips tv so my tip for you and what i wish i could have done but i didn't have time because this whole policy is so new is order the test through your cruise line to be sent to your home and do the home test so much less stressful they guarantee the results back in time in fact they give you the results right then and there and that's what i wish we would have had time to do but we didn't in a quarter mile, the destination is on your left, the Carnival Cruise Line's Long Beach Cruise Terminal. We've just arrived at the very windy Long Beach Cruise Terminal. It's cool, it's like mid-60s, it's a gorgeous September day, and we are headed to the Mexican Riviera for seven nights, the ports of Cabo San Lucas, Puerto Vallarta, and Mazatlan. We will also be live blogging this trip on our website, cruisetipstv.com. So be sure to go check out all of those trip reports and photos and all the juicy details on how we got here. Ready for you, yes! Yay! We're on board! It is exactly 2.14 p.m. and wow, was that a busy three-hour time period. We couldn't even stop in the terminal and give you guys an update because everything moved so fast. So I'm gonna back up to the point where we, oh my goodness, we just got to the terminal. And as soon as we pulled up, it was about, I would say 11.35 or so, just outside the front entrance of the terminal, they directed us to the area where um, we would check in since our son needed to get a COVID test on site. So that was kind of a separate line. We went through that line, entered into the COVID check-in area. Once we got inside the COVID check-in area, they reviewed our documentation and then they did a quick nose swab on our son. They used one of the little, it looks like they were using the little Abbott cards that you can do at home, very, very similar to the ones you do at home, but it's a requirement that kids get tested at the terminal. So we did that and his results came back within I would say 10 to 15 minutes they send you a text and an email then you get a little barcode and proceed to sort of check out of the area where you get your test 
What was so nice about the staff there is that instead of making us stand in the long checkout line, once we got through that process, they took us to the front of the line, which was really thoughtful because we were in there for a full, probably, I would say 45 minutes because the line got really long inside that area. So once we got done with the COVID test, it was actually time to board. They were calling our boarding number by 12.30 p.m. I think we had D3. So we grabbed our luggage and just started to proceed through the, um, the boarding process. We walked up some ramps. It was pretty crowded. There were a lot of people who converged on the terminal way before their assigned boarding time. Our boarding time was noon, and I think there were probably 2,000 people in the terminal by the time that we got here. And boarding is, the, those appointments are supposed to go up to like three. So I think everybody just kind of shows up at this terminal early. Anyway, we got on the ship, went straight to our room, dropped off our bags, and then went and explored just a little bit. And my husband filmed a stateroom tour for you, which we're gonna show you later. But now I do wanna show you around the stateroom just really, really quickly, so you can get just a quick look at it. But again, know that we'll have a full stateroom tour later. This is a spa balcony. I believe it's cabin. I'm trying to still remember this. I think it's one, two, two, four, five. And we're on the very end of a hallway. We have the spa amenities. We got a really good price on this cabin. And um, we have access to the thermal suite. The adults in the cabin have access to the thermal suite and some robes, some slippers, and some upgraded toiletries. So we're gonna give you a quick look at it. First, we're gonna flip you around and just show you the bed. Um, which is a nice, looks like it's a twin turned into a king size bed. And then pretty uh, spa colors in this room, like nice little accents. And then this is the sofa that converts to a bed for our son. Then a nice little table here. And now I'm gonna just flip you around and show you the vanity area, which is very nice. There's a refrigerator in here, as you can see. We've already put our sodas in there. It feels nice and cool. We have our phone, two USB plugs, two regular 120 volts and a 230 volt plug there. Some really nice shelving, ice bucket, a little vanity stool with a trash can and a drawer with of course the hair dryer. And then we're gonna move over to the closet. I'll just show you the closet and the restroom really quickly and then I'll tell you what our plans are for the rest of the day. So this is the first bank of shelves with a push button safe and three drawers. Really, really nice storage in this spa balcony cabin. Very, very impressed. And then we have, I'm gonna open both doors here. You can see our suitcases are kind of in. I know it's probably a little hard to see in there, but two uh, areas for hanging storage. And our slippers and robes are in there, which is nice. Oh, and a nice full length mirror, which is kind of a bonus. Very, very cool. Now I'm gonna just give you a quick look at the bathroom. I'll just get out of the way and let you take a peek. They have a shower curtain in there and some really pretty storage up against the mirror. Pretty standard bathroom. Actually, I would consider it quite spacious. There's a nice shaving mirror up on the wall and just some really pretty glass storage. Okay, so we are starving. We haven't had lunch yet. We're gonna go explore our food options, see what we can find. One tip for you if you are cruising on Carnival Panorama is that the Guy's Smokehouse Brew House has free barbecue on lunch and it is a plentiful spread. There was almost nobody out on the deck. The food looked so fresh and so good and the staff was so friendly and wonderful. They had all the different smoked meats. They had potato salad, coleslaw, and um, some fresh macaroni and cheese. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. But I think for tradition's sake, we have gotta go and try to get ourselves a guy's burger. So this is what's happening for today. 
or for your whole food because you are on vacation, correct? forgot to tell you all about one of the biggest parts of our day today. One of the first things that we did when we got on the ship just to get it out of the way was the e-muster. This was a really simple process, but I have to tell you it's a little different than the Royal Caribbean process that we experienced in June. So I'll tell you how it works here on Carnival. So you either launch your app and watch a one minute video on how to put on a life jacket and listen to a safety horn, or you can watch it on your television. Then you report to your muster station for another quick check-in. They just check off your room number or whatever, record that you've done the e-muster. And um, then you sit down and do another quick life jacket briefing and you're out of there in like one minute. It was really fast. But what was so different about this particular cruise is that just before sail away, Lee, the cruise director, came on and did a safety briefing over the entire PA system of the ship, and they stopped all of the services for just a moment. But it couldn't have been more than, what, two minutes, honey? Maybe, maybe two minutes, maybe five. But it was a lot better than going and sitting through a full drill. So I'm not sure why they do that extra step on Carnival, but it was still so painless. We were up at the miniature golf when it happened, and they just asked you to put your phones away, shut down services for a moment, and they get that done. So where we last left off, we were going to get our lunch, which we did. We ended up going to Guy's Burgers, and we all got Guy's Burgers. I think I got, what did I get? I didn't get the plain Jane, but I got the one that's kind of basic. And Hubby got the ringer, and Junior got the one with chili on it. I think it was called the Chilius Maximus, and it was delicious, but it was really spicy. He didn't expect it. Added a few things from the toppings bar, and then what we did is we found a comfortable place to sit inside the buffet because it was a little bit windy out on deck. So it was a little quieter in there. The buffet area that we sat in had some really nice selections of food too. So I liked my guy's burger, but I am more of like a salad and protein kind of a person at lunch. So I had a couple bites of my burger, then went to the salad bar and got some yummy salad and fish and things like that. And then Junior got some amazing gelato after that. They had coffee and mango gelato inside the buffet. And just kind of on the outer edge of the buffet, they also had soft serves. That was really good. 
after lunch, we regrouped a little bit in the stateroom and then Junior went and played a round of mini golf. And while he was playing mini golf up on, gosh, it's so close to our room. We're here on deck 14 in our spa cabin. You can just walk right back to the sports area. I went back and checked out the tides bar and the aft pool. The aft pool was empty for some reason and it was looking so inviting on this 75 degree September day. Everybody was kind of hanging out by the bar and just relaxing. So went and checked that out and then walked over because I've been so curious about the seafood shack and the seafood shack also completely empty. Tip for you on embarkation day, go to the aft pool and go to the seafood shack. There was virtually nobody there. So I roamed around back there, checked out what I'm going to get at the seafood shack. I feel like I could, I mean, you could eat maybe only 75% of the things on this ship over the course of a week. I don't know how I'm going to get to touch all of these restaurants, y'all, but it was really fun. Kind of got a little, you know, wet my appetite for what is to come. Then it was time for the sail away party. And you know, I love the way that Carnival does sail away parties. They did all the traditional songs. They did Wobble, they did the Cupid Shuffle, they did that other fun one, the Hey Baby one, where everybody puts their arms up like this. And the crowd was so into it. It was a really good, happy crew. Everyone just seems so thrilled to be back on a ship. Um, we're at about 75% capacity. They're saying that there's about 2,400 people on board. I understand that Panorama holds 4,000. I'm not sure what the math is on that, but that's about where we are right now. Sail Away was high energy and awesome. And it started getting a little tiny bit chilly after that. Around 4.45, 5, you could really feel that marine layer start to kind of come over the area and it got a little cool. But Junior was super brave and went up and he did the ropes course. There was absolutely no line. There was also no line for the sky ride, which is the one that's the bicycles that go around. So he got up on the ropes course and completed that. I would say it took him maybe about 10 minutes. And then after that, we came back to the room and had a little toast on our balcony, opened up some champagne and kind of just caught a, a little bit of the sail away out of Long Beach. We really spent most of the sail away up at the party this time on the pool deck. So now, it is time to go get my drink of the day. That is right, we're bringing back the drink of the day series to this cruise. My hope is to go to the Heroes Bar where they donate a portion of proceeds to Operation Homefront, a cause very near and dear to our hearts. So we're gonna go see if that works out and we'll let you know what the drink of the day is soon. I ended up with the Heroes Tribute Cocktail. They were all out of the souvenir glasses, but I got this one. It's about $13 with tax and tip. Here is what is in this drink from the Heroes Tribute Bar. It is Bombay Gin, Sky Cherry Vodka, Florida Kanya Rum, El Jimador Tequila, Patron Citronage, Sierra Mist, and Blue Curacao. So I asked the waiter, I was like, okay, is it super sweet? Because the Sierra Mist and the Blue Curacao made me nervous. He's like, no, no, it's not. And I would say it's kind of like akin to a Long Island iced tea. I think it's gonna sneak up on me just a little bit, but I love it. Highly recommend that you go and try this cocktail or just go check out the Heroes Tribute Bar. It is a sports bar. So we stepped out of that area because we didn't, you know, it was loud. There were sports playing and the TVs were going. So we didn't want to like, you know, talk in there while people were trying to enjoy the big game. But another tip for you, if you're coming on Carnival Panorama, you can definitely, definitely catch big sporting events in the Heroes Tribute Bar. So now, oh my goodness, it's getting late, you guys. It's 6.35 and it is time to go and get ready for our dinner at the Steakhouse, Fahrenheit 555. But I wanted to tell you that something funny happened along the way when we were on our way down here to Heroes Tribute Bar, we decided to take a tour of the spa and the thermal suite, which we have access to the thermal suite this week. So we got to learn all about the different treatments and boy, there were so many different treatments available from um, weight loss type treatments to acupuncture to cosmetic types, things like Restylane and things like that, basic massages, of course, and they have a lot of first day specials. So if you're interested in winding down the beginning of your cruise, they're definitely gonna give you a lot of good prices on day one. Now, if you're staying in a spa cabin, which we are, 
you also get bigger discounts on the spa treatments. And wow, the sun is really pouring through the uh, promenade deck right now. We keep having to shift around for the sun. But yeah, if you're in a spa cabin, you get 20% off your first treatment, 30% off your second treatment, and 40% off your third treatment. The normal discount is 10, 20, 30. But when you stay in a spa cabin, you get 20, 30, 40. So if you're the type of person who likes doing spa treatments, getting a spa cabin might actually be a good strategic move for you to save some money. So that was fun. Our spa tour was really cool and we met a lot of nice people there. It was great. I, I recommend checking out the spa on your first day. If it's something you're gonna do, let them tour you through when they're not doing any treatments and you can kind of get a feel for all the treatment rooms and the service providers there. So we're gonna go and dress for our steak dinner. We found a promenade deck on deck four, the mezzanine level. And there's something very protected about it. The way that it's structured, there's just a lot more steel sort of up against the ship. And then you have the lifeboats as well. So you can kind of walk around and there's not a lot of wind, which is really nice. So we're out here catching those pre-sunset, beautiful moments before we go to dinner. It's just gorgeous, it's just gorgeous. So when you're walking past the Heroes Bar, you're gonna see a whole bunch of um, doors that go to the outside. And it's a little bit intimidating because they say like emergency exit, but really it's fine to go out to the outside doors and just step out onto the promenade. There's very few people who have discovered this spot yet on the cruise. You see crew out here taking advantage of the fact that they're still getting like a little connection and they're making cell phone calls and stuff like that. But other than that, I've only seen maybe two cruise passengers. So come on down to deck four and check out this sweet little hidden spot. It's beautiful. Look at this. We found some really nice outdoor seating on the lanai, which is like another promenade area with lots and lots of cozy seating. We just finished our dinner, our first specialty dining on Carnival Panorama. We went to Fahrenheit 555. It was really good. It's the steakhouse on board. And let me recap for you what we had. So for my cocktail, I had the Seven Seas Martini recommended by our really, really attentive and wonderful server, it packed a punch. I've had two cocktails today and that's, that's definitely enough. Let me just put it that way. It was a pretty blue cocktail, but nice martini strength that I absolutely love. It was so good. And then for starters, oh my goodness, what do we have? Junior had the mac and cheese, Mr. Cruz Tips TV had the Caesar salad, and I had a shrimp cocktail and some kind of a spinach salad, which was really good. Surf and turf for my husband and I, filet mignon for our son. And then for desserts, Junior had the Nutella pizza, Mr. Cruz Tips TV had the cheesecake, and I had some kind of a beautiful chocolate globe was really, really good. Nothing felt heavy or overly filling. They did allow us to order two appetizers if we wanted to, just to let you know if you're coming on Carnival Panorama, that that is something you can do. And they were offering the free bottle of wine tonight in the dining room. It took us by surprise. Wasn't even expecting that. So it was a really lovely dinner. We also stopped by the arcade after dinner and Junior got a little bit of time to play. So tomorrow is our first sea day. Tomorrow's our wedding anniversary, which is one of the reasons why we booked this cruise. So it's our 23rd wedding anniversary. What a fitting way to spend it on a cruise. Mr. Cruise Tips TV and I have really embraced and come to enjoy cruise travel as a way to get away from the stresses of life. And so we're looking forward to celebrating 23 years on the high seas. And I have to be honest, we don't have any plans. So we're gonna see what tomorrow brings and just kind of play it by ear, maybe sleep in a little bit, enjoy some of the wonderful food here on the ship. There's so much to see and do on Carnival Panorama. If you're coming on this ship, my advice to you would be just take it all in. It's a big ship. There's a lot of dining opportunities. There's so much beautiful, beautiful outdoor space. There's so much to see. You have so many different cabin choices on this type of ship as well. We chose a spa cabin, but even an inside cabin would be absolutely wonderful and I would consider it. So we're going to go finish off our night, take some showers and just rest 
But thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out our website, cruisetipstv.com, for our travel diaries or kind of trip reports from this cruise. We have just um, kind of logged every day of the cruise, and we'll certainly link to it in the description of this video. But thank you for following along. Be sure to check out our next vlog coming real soon. Until next time, friends, we'll see you on the high seas.